Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, hope you guys enjoy this one. It's a pretty quick one. I, it was a 2-3 game. I bought in for $300 and the table I was at was a little bit harder to record so I ended up winning about $150 or $200 there. And then I took my winnings, I took my uh, stack, I had about like $450, $500 or so. And I went to play 2-3 at a different table where all this footage is. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy and uh, thanks for sticking around. In one of the first hands at this table, I pick up 8-7 offsuit and it limps over to me, so I open a $15, under the gun plus one, calls and the cutoff calls, so we're now three players headed to a flop. Since both my opponents limped, I figured maybe I could take down the pot pre-flop with a open raise, but that's not what ended up happening, and the flop comes out king, queen, six, rainbow. I go ahead and make the check here, and both my opponents make the check as well, so we're off to the turn, which comes out a four of hearts. At this point, I'm not exactly sure what anyone has. I think a bet is appropriate here just to kind of gauge where I'm at in this pot. Um, so I go ahead and put out a bet for $15. And under the gun plus one calls shortly after that. The cutoff folds pretty fast and we're off to the river. It'd be awesome to hit a five here and back into this straight, but unfortunately the king of spades comes out on the river. The fact that a king comes out makes it less likely my opponent has one, but he's also thinking the same about me. However, I was not the one that limped preflop. I actually open raised in the small blind, so I think it's a lot more likely in this position for me to have a king in my range, and I go ahead and take a shot at it, so I bet out $60 here. After watching this footage back, it looks like this was not the greatest bluff. Um, if he had a queen in his range here, I assume he probably would have folded if he saw the king already, so the second king doesn't really help me much, but he ends up folding, and uh, we take down a pretty nice pot, so I got rewarded for a, a decent bluff, I guess. About 5 minutes after that hand, we pick up Queen Jack suited in under the gun, and I have about $480 behind right now. I go ahead and open it up to $15. Under the gun plus 1 puts in the call for $15, and the middle position shoves for what is effectively $75. I've seen this guy play a few times before, and he typically buys in short and does a lot of all-ins pre-flop with not the best holdings. So with that logic, I go ahead and put in the call for $75, and I definitely think a raise would have been viable here as well to try and get this heads up as uh, best as I could, but I do get lucky under the gun plus one fold, and we are now heads up with the main villain here, and we're going to see a flop. There's a lot of cards my opponent can have in his range right now, and I'm hoping it's one of those hands where he just has something decent and he wanted to just jam because he got impatient. The flop comes out king seven jack rainbow. I'm a little confused at why we're not just going to the turn. And then I realize he actually has like $8 behind. So I guess I just, he didn't go all in. I didn't notice that. So I just put him all in there and uh, we're off to the turn and river, which comes out a six of clubs and eight of spades. He shows ace queen offsuit and we get very lucky there dodging the ace and the queen and hitting the jack. Um, you know, very fortunate pot there and we take down a pretty nice profit. And about 10 minutes after that, we're on the button and at this point I'm up about $300 or so from what I initially bought in with. So I go ahead and open a 20 here with pocket sixes. I ended up opening a little larger than I typically do because there was one limper. And I see that all three players end up putting in the call, so we are now four players headed to a flop. In my head I'm thinking if I miss the flop or I don't have any draws, I'm probably just going to fold if anyone bets, but we get extremely lucky and we actually hit a set on the flop, 6-10-5 rainbow, a perfect board for us, the small blind bets out $20, the big blind gets out of the way pretty quickly, but the hijack decides he wants to see one more card. I want to just put in a call here and let my opponents catch up while I'm in position. It's a relatively dry board and there's no flush or straight draws really to be charging for right now, so I go ahead and slow play it and put in the call. And to my surprise, the six of hearts comes out on the turn. We make quads, which is massive, into two opponents that have been playing pretty aggressive. So as soon as I see small blind bet $100, I'm just licking my lips here thinking we're about to come up really big on this pot. Action is on the cutoff now, and I'm curious what he's going to do, but he ends up just putting in the calling chips for $100. The ball is in my court now and I have a few decisions I have to think through here. I could definitely raise and charge the flush draws or maybe even charge the over pairs before a flush comes potentially, but um, I think with how my opponents have been playing tonight and also previously, they're pretty aggressive and sound players and I think they might take a shot at betting on the next street, so I go ahead and just put in the call and slow play it one last time. I'm in position here and with two players to act before I do, I think it's a reasonable decision. The two of diamonds comes out on the river and instantly the small blind shoves for effectively $360. Hijack folds and I put in the snap call and show him the bad news. 
He shows Pocket Kings a really strong hand on that board, especially with how the streets played out. Uh, but unfortunately for him, I have the quads and I take down a massive pot. I consider this guy a really good player and I've played with him a few times at this point, so I also consider him a friend. We have discussions about poker and he gives me a lot of advice from time to time. Also, apparently this was a hot hand at the casino and I was supposed to get about $200 from them for making quads, but unfortunately shortly after this hand someone made quad 10s and got the reward instead. So I was a bit card dead for quite a long time actually, about 30 or 40 minutes passed, and finally in the middle position we pick up ace-queen offsuit. Under the gun limps, so I raise it to $20. We're doing really good at this point in time, we're up a lot of money from what we started with, so I'm feeling pretty confident and I'm feeling pretty lucky as well. Uh, the cutoff calls for $20, so now we're heads up headed to the flop. This is that aggressive player I was talking about earlier who buys in short and goes all in frequently, so I'm not too worried about his range. The flop that comes out is definitely not the best for us, it's jack 6 king with 2 spades. We do have 1 spade, so we have the backdoor flush drop, but we also have a straight draw. So with that being said, I go ahead and put in the c-bet here for $30, and he hesitates for a bit, looks like he's gonna maybe make a call, but he ends up jamming for $105. Now, normally I would just fold this because I think he might have a pair or two pair and I'm, I'm behind, but honestly this guy plays kind of crazy and he does this a lot when he's short stacked, so I feel like we have enough equity here to put in the call, and I go ahead and do that for $75 more. But there's no reason to stress because the 10 of hearts comes out on the turn and the 2 of spades comes out on the river. We end up making a straight. I got super lucky on this hand. I think it was a bit of a uh, loose call, but it ends up paying off. I believe he had a king or something like that. I couldn't really tell. Uh, he definitely had a pair. I do remember that. And we got bailed out by the 10. About 30 minutes later, we pick up king queen offsuit in the middle position. Uh, under the gun opens to $15 and I raise it up to $45. Everyone else kind of folds out, so under the gun calls the $30 and we're off to the flop heads up. I do have a positional advantage here with a pretty strong hand, but the flop comes out 775. Uh, C bet might be in order here, but I end up just checking it over to the turn, which comes out a 10 of clubs. There is a pretty strong chance we're against a ace high right now, and I think it's a good time to make a bet, especially when he checks it over to me. So I go ahead and put in the bet for $35 here. I'm really hoping he just folds here and um, we take down the pot. I'm targeting hands like ace-queen, ace-jack, things like that. Um, but he does end up putting in the call for $35, so that does kind of uh, put an alarm in my head here. The jack of diamond comes out on the river and he checks it over to me. I'm pretty sure now he doesn't have much, but for some reason I get a little worried that he could be trapping me. I overthink this spot a bit. After watching the clip back, I think it's a great spot to maybe make a bluff in. He checked a lot of streets back to me, and it's really unlikely he's trapping, but I end up just giving up and checking, hoping my king high has some value. He ends up showing pocket sixes, and I'm instantly regretting my decision. I think we had a great chance there to steal that pot. All right, everyone, that wraps up my 2-3 session at the Lucky Lady. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. I hope it was entertaining enough. I know there was not that many hands there. I've been trying to make my clips a bit shorter now because... Um, got some feedback from people and they said maybe it's, it's a bit too long my videos so um, just curious how everyone feels about that maybe I should cut them a bit shorter or maybe just keep them a little bit um, longer than this one not totally sure still trying to figure it out but um, nonetheless appreciate you guys watching and I will see you guys in the next one